the second video of how to test differential protection using DRTS from ISA and also the TDMS, the software which controls the DRTS relay test set. So what we did in the first video was actually setting up the system. We set up the transformer, CTs and relay and also we inserted the correct characteristic which we read from the relay and right now the third test I want to show you is the harmonic restraint test. In order to do that we'll have to go again into tab system, sub tab harmonics and enable the second harmonic test. In my case it is this characteristic I'm looking for pick up current, differential current is 30% I over I n and in my case it is 15% of the second harmonic which uh, would be the borderline value so everything above would not allow would block a trip and everything below would allow a trip so let us proceed to test selection harmonic restraint we see now the second harmonic enabled and because I don't want to lose a lot of time doing this because we have some more tests after that I'm going to start from 3 I over I n finish at 4 with the step of 1 so we'll actually have two tests I'll click OK and start. So let me explain what's going on here. This window is a part of manual control, another application, but it is used to create sine waves which are not pure sine waves actually which have a certain uh, th which is used to create sine waves with, the spe uh, with a certain amount of harmonic distortion. Right now we are generating comtrade files which are being then sent to the relay, injected into the relay and we can see here that we are dancing around the number 15 anything which is above 15 so would block the trip and anything which is below would actually allow a trip to happen. Just to recapitulate, just to remember, uh, just to remind you what is the harmonic restraint about. Harmonic restraint is about blocking the trip when we are energy energizing a transformer because the transformer which is not energized uh, would take some current to magnetize its core and that current would enter but it would not exit meaning the transformer would see a certain differential current and we don't want the relay to trip while this is happening so because this magnetizing current has a big percentage of the second harmonic uh, the relays are set up in such a way not to trip if we have more than certain percentage of the second harmonic meaning that the relay meaning that the transformer is still being magnetized so we already did the first point and now we're executing the second point the automatic algorithm basically goes as far away and then as to see uh, that the relay will be tripping for 12 or 13 percent and then as it approaches number 15 it finds the threshold. So it found the threshold here and here and if we move to the right, if we scroll to the right we'll see that we have a pass on both points and we will also see that our results are not 15 which would be the nominal value but it's 14, 59 for both points which is very good. This would be the harmonic uh, restraint error. This is for the second harmonic. For the fifth harmonic it's basically equal. What we're doing now is changing here in tab system sub tab harmonics from number two to number five. We are enabling fifth harmonic and again this is my characteristic 0, 3, 25 percent is the correct value. We are not touching the relative and absolute values of margins. The orange lines mark the margins but we will continue with this. Moving on to the test tab to be more exact test selection enabling fifth harmonic and doing the same test for the fifth harmonic by pressing start. The fifth harmonic is slightly different than the second one. The second one would tell you that we are still that the transformer is still being energized while the fifth harmonic signifies that transformer is over excited. And as we can see, the harmonic distortion is much bigger, at least graphically, 
but also because it's not anymore 15, but it's about 25%. So we are now moving towards number 25. This number is growing at 2477, it didn't trip. So that means that now it's moving back towards smaller number to find out where is the actual threshold. And when the threshold is found, we will be that will mean that we have um, executed the first point. So right now I heard the trip. Probably we'll be moving on and yeah, we're moving on to the next point. So we start with 25 and then with lower values. So for 22.5 we should have a trip. Also for 21.25, etc. etc. While this test is being executed, let me just show you this cursor just to explain when the cursor has not thunder, but let's say this these little bubbles you can see. Um, it means that we are generating a comtrade file, which is a special file created in DRTS to test our harmonic restraint. Usually the comtrade files are uh, used also to check if the relay had a proper operation. So let's see, I hope that soon we will hear another trip which would mean that, and there it is, which would mean that we are finished with this second test of 25th harmonic, I'm sorry, of 5th harmonic. So these are our results and if we move, if we slide to the right, we'll see that the numbers are not 25 but 24.53 and 24.55 which is a very consistent result. So that's a good result and we will store these tests right now to the result table which is this one here and we'll proceed with our next test which is a trip time test. A trip time test is a very easy test where we in which we actually set the restraining current to zero and just change the differential current. We expect a trip in every point and here I will start with 0 0.3 or I start with a slightly higher 0 0.5 I over I n. 0 0.3 would be the threshold so move on. We'll go slightly above the threshold until 5 I over I n with a step of 0 0.5 by pressing yes I'm adding 10 tests and right now we can see trips for all the points. Um, of course we would expect the trip tripping time to be equal for all the differential uh, current but this change which we can see for example right now is due to the construction of the relay has got nothing to do with the test equipment the only thing we should know is, for example, if, let's say, tripping in this point, which would be 63 milliseconds, is acceptable result or not. In my case, this is an acceptable result because we are just showing you how to use this application. Now, this was, as I said, the trip time test. The next test will be the stability test. But before that, we're going to move all these tests to our result. And this was one which wasn't executed, I'll delete it. And we'll move on to the stability test. Now, stability test is similar to trip time test. It's basically, um, in this case, we are not changing the differential current, the differential current is zero all the time, we are just changing the restraining current which will then show us more or less if our uh, relay is stable which would mean if we have a big fault outside of our protection zone and a huge current passes through the transformer we are sure that the relay will not trip for that because it shouldn't trip if the fault is outside of the protected zone. So from 0 0.5 until 8 with a step of 1 on phase 1 we are going to click OK and let me see if we correctly 
set all this. If I go to test, no, this wasn't correct. Excuse me, let me repeat that. Delete all tests, yes. So once again, we are here from, or let me move this slightly more so that we don't have many points. Let's change this to L123, for example, and click OK. Right now, by going to test, we can see that IR changes while ID stays zero. What I expect from this is to have timeout in every point because, as we said, the differential, and as you can see, differential current is zero, but restraining current is increasing. The high restraining current means that there is a big current running through the transformer, probably due to the fault outside of the protected zone. In this case, the relay should not trip, and as we see, the relay is not tripping. We can see timeout everywhere, and we can see pass for all these points. This would show us practically that we have good results, so we will, we will store, store them. We can now see our results right here, and we can then first print them. We click OK, and we will see here one template which is used to generate these results. We can print out in PDF, we can print results out in doc format, Excel, or uh, for example, rich text file. These are our nominal characteristics, also these are our nominal characteristics, the one we set up. And then we have our results here for the second and fifth harmonic. And we have our results here for the trip time test. And this is actually what we wanted to see. So now by pressing this, we are going to change this to PDF. We'll call it one and we're going to save it to my desktop export completed so by closing this you can continue now I will just show you the last trick I'm going to save this in my TDMS in the library which I have created so I'll click save in TDMS and I'm going to choose one place where this can be added. So for example, let's go Celia Galaxy, line one, relays. This is my relay and I'll say differential protection, save. This allows me to save my result in the database and then I can always open it from the database and repeat the same tests. So this was all from me about the differential protection. I hope you found this useful. Please send some comments if you have, subscribe to my channel and as always be safe while you're testing. Thank you for your attention and I hope we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.